Kennen is the cute rat of League of Legends. A good Kennen hides out division, jumps into five people, and instantly wins a game. Whereas a bad Kennen will have the exact same picture in their mind, but is not quite able to execute it. Today I have found a player who has hit rank 29 challenger, EU West, against all the odds, using a laptop that can barely run the game, on a champion that may not be completely off meta, but he is playing in an off meta role, with one of the lowest pick rates in the game. So the sponsor forgot to send over any details for this ad, but I thought we'd just do it anyway. So this video is sponsored by Porofessor. Uh, if I was the creator of the best companion app for League of Legends, what would I want to show people? I should probably explain that Porofessor is an overlay app that gives you a ton of information without even having to alt tab out of the client. As a sponsor, I'd probably tell myself to play some games to test it. Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wow, okay, yes, this app is really useful. So I should probably mention something about how in Champ Select you can just click this button and instantly get the correct runes right to your client. When when you get in-game, Porofessor collects data on all your opponents, like how good they are at their champion, if they are an aggressive or a passive player. You get a team comp analysis showing what your team does well and where your win condition is. It's like having a challenger player sitting next to you telling you to go gank this guy because he overextends a lot. Then you gank him, and then you win the game. Another cool thing I found, Porofessor lets you compare your play to the average of your rank. So if I compare myself to the average diamond player, it shows what I need to improve to climb past them. And then when we get to the end of the ad, I'd probably end it with a message like, Porofessor is completely free. Download it at the link in in the description. I think they'd like that. Our player today is named Maitre Splinter. Yes, when this guy became Kennen main, he did change his name to Master Splinter as a tribute to his second favourite rat, right after Kennen, Splinter, the wise old trainer from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was a show he watched a lot of growing up. And also, yes, he is French. His first memory of League was when he was nine years old, watching his brothers play in the beta, and wishing he understood the game enough to play. He joined the game at the age of 11, around season 4, finally ready to join his brothers. He started started by playing as many champions as he could. At the time, this was just for fun, but when he looks back on this now, he realised that this helped him gain so much knowledge about matchups and champion weaknesses that he could exploit. In Season 5, he joined Ranked with one goal in his mind, impress his brothers and reach their skill level. He started by duoing with a friend, and he continued first timing champions, reaching gold 5. Again, he did not wish to one-trick or start tryharding, so he kept playing every role, any champion, which again prepared him for his future. He knew a lot about jungling without even trying to play it and it was the same for all of the other roles. In Season 6, he had began to love off-meta picks. His first invention was Triforce Leona, which actually brought him up to Platinum. Season 7, Splinter kept trying new things, Nidalee, Lee Sin, and some Kennen. When he was playing Duo, he struggled to move above Platinum, but solo he was having a huge amount of success. In Season 8, he decided to move on from his Duo. He was now too high rank for them to even play together, so it was time to go solo. This was incredibly useful for Splinter, with him immediately hitting Diamond for the first time. There was one other problem happening during all of this that I have not mentioned. Splinter was playing every day with a very old laptop. Ever since Season 4, he had been playing on this machine, with his game dropping to 20 FPS in every single team fight. and after every game he had to turn off his PC and reboot it to get it ready for the next game. So what do you do when your equipment is so bad you struggle to contribute to fights? Well what he did was find a champion, where this doesn't matter. He searched his champion pool for a solution. He liked Lee Sin, but couldn't reliably do his combos on this laptop. Then he found Kennen, a champion that has a very simple combo in fights. All he needed to do was flash in Alt and Zonyas and he would look like he was a pro player. Even on 20 FPS, he could finally start contributing to team fights. So season 10 begins, he has a plan. He would play Kennen, a very unpopular champion that he felt deserved more love, and he wanted to show people why Kennen mid was pretty good. Splinter started to spam games, playing every day. By October, he had over 700 games of Kennen, fully focusing on learning everything about the champion, and with this, he finally hit Master for the first time. When he hit Master, he lost all motivation. He was just a student, struggling through class every day. He had hit Master, but Grandmaster and Challenger were a whole different story. He stopped playing rank completely and left his account. When Season 11 started, Splinter came back. He had a new goal, become the number one ranked Kennen. Challenger is great, but he knows everything about this champion, so he knew this was achievable. In just 3 weeks and 67 games, he hit rank 1. Since he had done this so fast, and had once again hit his highest rank, he knew he could keep going up. Next, he hit Grandmaster, top 700 EU West. Then he hit a streak of bad losses, dropping 
came back to master. His mental never shifted. He kept his positivity up, always saying good luck, have fun in chat every single game, and remaining upbeat after losses. Three more long months of grinding passed, and in May, he finally reached Challenger for the first time. He now remains in Challenger, still climbing, recently hitting 1000 LP, rank 29 on the EU ladder. All the way up to Challenger, Splinter's only focus was to make sure by the end of the game he had played his best, and was left with no regrets. He was constantly either winning the game, or being the MVP of the losing team, always being positive in chat and admitting to mistakes to ensure his teammates were not tilting. So why does he play Ken in mid instead of top? Well to put it simply, Ken in top is much harder at the moment. Splinter's opinion is that season 11 top lane matchups for Kennen are all difficult. All top laners are better than Kennen in lane, especially bruisers, and even if their champion isn't better than Kennen, they can just buy mercury treads early, once again becoming better than him. Kennen is picked in pro play to counter specific top laners, so that means he's very bad to one trick. In 1v1's top lane, Kennen gets outscaled fast, with champions like Jax or Fiora trading well with him in lane, and then destroying him later on. Splinter plays Kennen mid instead, to have as much impact on the game as possible. Mid lane matchups are easier, and he always has the option to join fights, top or bot lane. If he plays mid lane, then he gets one of these OP bruiser frontliners on his team, rather than stealing their spot with Kennen. In lane at level 1, Kennen has one goal, get priority for Scuttlecrab at 3 minutes 15 seconds. So he wants his wave to hit tower around this time, so Kennen can leave join his jungler and start a fight against the enemy jungler. Instantly, he has a game plan, but how does he do it? If you have more wave clear, then your best choice is to hard push wave with E at level 1, last hitting and shoving. Once you get level 2, use W on all the minions for even more wave clear, again pushing to tower over and over again, getting you lane priority for crab. Alternatively, you can also let the enemy push and force them into a bad situation. Here's a great example of using the enemy to create priority. Kennen uses E on the melees at level 1. He can't push against Twisted Fate, so he lets it push in. The wave hits Kennen's tower, staying alive long enough for his wave to focus fire. So this means for the next wave, all of Kennen's minions will focus fire on one of the enemy melees, killing it fast and slow pushing. This continues through the wave, guaranteeing Kennen will now get priority. Ignore the fighting, it doesn't matter, the wave is still pushing. The next wave comes, Kennen's wave is still huge, so it pushes to tower. It's 3 minutes 15, Kennen runs over to Crab and helps his jungler. By letting TF push and seeing his minions focus fire, he knows he will have priority for crap, so he just lets it happen. As Kennen mid, you start Doran's Blade. You have no mana costs. You should be playing very aggressive in these early levels. You want to be poking with Q, looking for free auto attacks and stuns where you can. Splinter even goes for trades at level 1. He E's forwards, which gives him extra attack speed. With the range and the Doran's Blade damage, it's hard for enemies to win a long trade against Kennen, so you can really pressure people here. In a good matchup, Kennen keeps doing this, keeps pressuring, so of course you need to think about the enemy jungler. Here are some good ward spots challengers use to make sure they always see the enemy jungler before they gank. You cannot just have one spot for every game, you need to track the enemy jungler. Start by looking at the laners, see who's late to lane, you now know where the enemy jungler started. If he's going to cheese gank you at level 2, you know this will happen within the first 30 seconds, so play away from the side he starts on. If instead he paths towards his other buff, you know which side he's going to gank from, and that it will happen from about 2 minutes 30 onwards. So use a ward on that side to spot him early, then use your Q to farm at long range to stay safe. If you are overextending, make sure you save E to give you the ability to zoom away if you get ganked. During laning phase, Kennen wants to be using Electrocute as much as he can. If you can do this a couple of times, you're ready to get a solo kill. Your W passive is the most important part of your kit here. Ideally, Kennen will always be ready to land a stun. If you are being engaged on, you need to stun and walk away to get out safely. If you are going for a kill, you need to lead with a stun to set up your jungler. The easiest way to get this to happen is to auto to get your stun ready. E forwards to hit the enemy, auto attack and W to stun them, then Q afterwards for damage. This kind of combo means you don't need to land any skill shots. Once you hit level 6, it is time to go for a kill. If the enemy mid laner is squishy and killable, a 1v1 is a good option. It's really hard to mess up a 1 vs 1 kill. An ideal combo would be poking them down, using E to speed in, ulting and killing them with your WQ. You use your E first as your speed, but it also gives you extra attack speed, letting you auto more to get an extra stun. If you can hit someone with your E, it regens energy, so then you can use your full combo afterwards. Stay on top of the enemy with your ult as it ramps up in damage on each enemy the longer they stay inside it. Otherwise, if you can't get a 1 vs 1, look to roam. Before you go for a roam, always try and push in your wave to the enemy tower. If you leave lane in Season 11 without doing this, you lose multiple plates, which are worth just as much as a kill, so E through the wave and W to clear it, then move. Don't forget, when leaving lane, make sure you stack up your auto attack stun, ready for a gank. This is the most reliable way to stun enemies in the fight, especially if there is a wave blocking your Q. You don't need to worry about the wave because you don't need to land the Q. Just run in at the carry. E, W, auto to attack and stun them for 
for a kill. A bad cannon would always try and hit Q here and end up missing out on a kill. Your other option is to teleport. Splinter takes teleport every game because Kennen is so good with it. A single flank TP at any point in the game with Kennen can destroy a lane and instantly get a huge lead for your team. The best way to use it for kills is bot lane, getting a flank TP on multiple people. Bot lane is easy because they will be level 6 much later than you are. Top lane, you will ideally be counter ganking with teleport, saving your top laner and turning it around for a double kill. In mid game, you should now have your core item, Hextech Rocket Belt. By this point, your goal should be at least 8 CS per minute, and you should have tried to make an impactful play like a solo kill or a roam. Rocket Belt is great on all AP assassins like Kennen. He wants to engage and hit lots of enemies, so an extra dash is always worth it. Even Akali is now buying Rocket Belt, showing that you can never have too much mobility. In mid game, you have two options either go to the side lane and look for a 1 vs 1, or group with your team to fight for an objective. How do you choose? Well, Splinter goes for 1 vs 1 in the side lane if he has a lead on the enemy. He wants to keep getting as much XP and gold as possible in these waves, then tries to force a kill when he knows where the enemy jungler is. If you are ahead, this kill is easy, but if you're behind, grouping up may be a better option. If you're grouping, then ideally you would have Zonyas here as well. It is vital on Kennen for after he engages, and you will see why. If there is an important objective on the map, like a useful dragon or a baron, and you have flash available, then you should buy a sweeper and force a team fight. Kennen with flash rocket belt is an unstoppable engage that can cross a full screen, kill 5 people, and win a game. Splinter tries to use this combo as a surprise, covering a huge distance, reaching the backline, doing as much damage as he can, then using Zonyas to stay alive once enemies start focusing him. As long as you've gone in with your team nearby, this will let your team catch up, finish off kills, and win the fight. But Splinter also has a couple of special team fight strategies that have really helped him climb. Instead of going for this flashy 1v9 engage, sometimes he plays more patient. If his team has a range advantage, so stuff like a Jace top or an Ezreal AD carry, he just lets his team poke the enemies. They are now forced into making a decision. Either they have to leave to stop being poked, or more likely, what's going to happen 99% of the time, they will start a fight. Once the enemy engages onto your teammates, Kennen comes in with ult and uses it to peel for his carries. This is really good when you're behind on Kennen, because the enemies won't know what's going to happen. I've watched about 40 of this Kennen's replays and talked to him for about a month. I still would not know how this fight turns out. It's almost certain that when you use an AoE high damage ult like Kennen's to disengage, it will work. So Kennen disengages, your team peels away, enemies are overextended, and you can chase them down for kills. This is the kind of play only a one trick would really have enough experience to experiment with, because engaging with the Kennen ult is just so good. Additionally, flanking on Kennen is very important. Flank TPs in fights are the best way to set this up. Like in this fight, Kennen TPs to a ward quite far away, walks behind and surprises enemies in a choke point, instantly winning the fight. You do not always have to be teleporting right behind enemies. In fact, the best teleports are way out of vision, then sprinting with home guards to cut off the enemy's escape. But you don't always need to teleport to get these flanks off. Often Splinter just splits from his team to find a flank spot, using Sweeper to clear any vision and sitting in a bush waiting for a fight. This is especially good if you're playing against a disengaged support, like a Lulu or a Janna, because if they see you coming, they'll spam their disengage and ruin your fight. If you surprise them, they are stunned and dead before they can do anything. Kennen Alt, then Flash also works to give enemies even less reaction time. This can be used over a wall, for example, to enter a fight with your ult already active, ready to set up a big burst on multiple enemies. In late game, Kennen does pretty much the same thing. The main difference is that his side lane 1v1s are now much more difficult and should be avoided, preferring only team fights. You do not want to completely ignore side lanes, you need to be managing the waves well, collecting the XP and gold from them, continuing to farm. If you are not doing this and the enemies are, you will fall behind in levels, items, and constantly end up having pressure coming towards your base. The later the game goes, the more important your flash is, so tell your team you need it for team fights. Then stall until it's up and go for a massive engage. Here are some Kennen tips directly from Splinter, so you can start playing like a challenger player right away. Do not overuse your E ability. If you don't hit an enemy with it, you don't get the regen, and so it ends up costing a ton of energy. The cooldown is long and it's your main safety tool, so you don't want to waste it. With Kennen ult, don't forget it makes you tanky. Every time you level it up, it gives you more armor and magic resist when you use it. This is part of the reason why buying health on Kennen is good. You're getting resistances from ult, so health makes sure you use them effectively. Splinter wrote a ton of matchup advice for us, so let me simplify it. The easiest matchup for Kennen mid are assassins. Zed, Katarina, Echo. Kennen can poke them easily in lane and match their damage in fights. To me, this sounds incredibly positive and should be very encouraging to new Kennen players. The easy matchups are exactly what is common in solo queue right now. Zed, Katarina, Akali. These assassins are the highest pick rate out of anyone. The hardest matchups are control mages, like Orianna, Syndra, Ryze, and Annie. Control mages are universally thought to be in a bad spot right now. Even pro players are not picking Syndra or Orianna because of banned item synergies. And remember, matchups only really matter in lane. Kennen will destroy a Syndra in a fight or a 1 vs 1, so maybe Kennen 
Ganon is the perfect champion to break this meta. The only counters missing are Aurelia and Nocturne. They can fight you constantly and CC you to get a kill. He bans Aurelia every game to avoid this. Nocturne mid is very uncommon, but may be worth dodging the game. His skill order is interesting. He starts E almost every game for damage, and for the bonus attack speed to help with harass. If you're really good at hitting skill shots, then maxing Q first is ideal for most damage. If you're bad at skill shots or if you're in a tough matchup, W max first can even be better for more reliable damage and wave clear. For his build, he follows a very similar one every game. Start Doran's Blade almost every time. Doran's Shield is good against control mages to lower their poke. Early on, he likes to base for Dark Seal and Boots. This gives a good snowballing option and mobility for roams. First item should always be Hextech Rocket Belt. It is vital on Kennen for mobility and engages, as well as safety. You can buy components like Seeker's Arm Guard or Oblivion Orb early if they're needed for your matchup. Sorcerer Shoes he buys every game. Next is Zonya's for fights and Void Staff for extra damage. These items will be perfect almost every game, setting Kennen up to carry even against tanks. After this your build is situational. Buy Royal Ice if your team needs more CC. Banshee's Veil if you need to engage through enemies' disengage abilities. Demonic Embrace against enemies with lots of health, or if you just want some more health yourself. Morelanomicon if you're against lots of healing. Or just Rabadons if you need flat damage. Again, he has very specific runes that he takes. He loves Electrocute instead of Airy. Airy is better if you poke a lot in lane, but then becomes worse than Electrocute once you're out of lane. His most common runes are these. High damage from Domination Tree, with extra mobility from the Sorcery Tree. In melee matchups he takes this page, letting him play aggressive and not die to all ins. Against poke like control mages, he swaps to this page, with Doran Shield first to handle the poke. Against heavy roaming champions like Twisted Fate, he even has another page, Minion Dematerializer, to help him push waves and then follow them. Thanks again to Parofessor for sponsoring this video, check it out in the description. Make sure you check out Splinter as well on his social media linked below. He would also like to shout out Gia Pride on Twitter, as he has learnt a lot about Kennen from this pro top laner.